Um, so you might be wondering, why would anyone want to install this wonderful software? Um, and basically, uh, my boss said he would pay $10,000 to whoever found a way to remotely install our software. And I took that challenge up. Um, when you take a job like this for money, an offer like this is enticing. Um, so this is another surprise. Um, it exploits an Internet Explorer flaw. It's shocking. Um, so our exploit and any exploit with remote execution requires two things. You need to get the file on the computer and out of the protected IE zones, like, um, like if you go into the security panel of Internet Explorer, you've got like trusted sites, local internet, that kind of thing. Those are the zones we're talking about. So we want to bust out of those zones. And you also want to execute the file once you get it on the hard drive. Um, so again, me not really being a hacker, and I don't claim to be leet at all, but um, I basically signed up for security mailing lists and just sat there until something came along that looked like could be used for this. And we found one pretty quickly. Um, what basically, you'd create a custom CHM file, which I think had the EXE embedded into it. Um, and that, those are basically help files. Com I think it stands for uh, compiled HTML. And um, for some reason, Windows Media Player would be able to execute it once it was embedded in this CHM. Um, I, can't, I can't remember the exact name of this exploit. Um, it came out just before Service Pack 2 for XP came out, and Microsoft actually made uh, security a bit of a priority. Um, and that shut down this exploit, but people don't patch their machines, so it's not actually that big of a deal. Um, yeah, and my boss was convinced that this was not illegal. And, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not a lawyer. Who knows? Uh, I'm also from Canada, so I don't know if the laws are different there than they are here. Um, plus, everything was hosted on, in Russia, so that adds more fun to the mix. Um, and I'll show you why he didn't think it was illegal. Um, we basically created a custom installation dialog. Um, and my boss never paid the $10,000. <laughs> and I don't say this to make you feel bad for me, because I definitely don't expect that. I just want to, like this, industry, surprise, surprise, attracts a lot of scumbags, and uh, <laughs> yeah, don't trust their word. Um, I think basically what happened is the guy who was funding the operation gave him the money, and then he gambled it all away, because um, apparently I found out later that he was also a gambling addict. Um, yeah, so I'm, there was lots of promises for the money, but not actually any of the money, which is slightly different, not worth nearly as much. Um, so if you remember back in the glory days of Internet Explorer 6, um, whenever something asked to uh, basically uh, become integrated with Internet Explorer 6, you would get this dialog, which was, like, I'm not a usability expert, but this is insane. Like, do you want to install and run a .cab file, which your grandma is not going to know what that is? And it says the publisher cannot be determined due to the problems below. The test route has not been enabled as trusted route. Yeah, so very clear. Anyway, like, I don't even think you really need to use an exploit. Like, I think there's a certain percentage of people that will click yes no matter what. Um, so, but anyway, we had our exploit and we were using it. Um, so this is our installation dialog, and it's a bit more devious. Um, I didn't put this together and I didn't word it, but it's pretty hilarious. Um, so it starts at the top, browser enhancer. I'll read this out because I don't know if people at the back can see it. So browser enhancer in big bold letters, like that sounds awesome. <laughs> um, congratulations, you have been awarded a browser enhancement exclamation mark. <laughs> Key features of our software include, number one, giving the user another opinion while, they're, while they surf the web broadening their experience and knowledge of the web. I don't know what that means, and broadening is also spelled wrong. <laughs> um, number two, giving, giving options to search the web with great search engines. Um, and three, providing the user with other partner software free of charge. <laughs> um, 
you have previously agreed to our terms and conditions to get this step of installation and can review these, st these terms by clicking right on this link. So this actually would bring up our terms and conditions and it was, it was long, like it was like 20 pages if you probably printed it out and basically boiled down to like, we own your machine. <laughs> um, and if you can close all the pop-ups, we'll let you use it once in a while. Um, and the last paragraph is pretty good, like, if you change your mind and would like to continue the installation, please uncheck the box below and close this window. If you leave the box checked and close the window, we will finish your installation free of charge. <laughs> um, and there's a little checkbox just off to the bottom left there. And I think it was even more devious than that. So like, back in the day there was a lot of pop-ups. Pop-up blockers weren't really integrated into browsers. So when you saw something pop up, you would automatically just close it right away. Like it was like al almost completely subconscious. Um, so if you had done that, you would have installed the software. And I, like, I probably would have fell for this. Um, so if you click the X in the top right or the, the big close this window button, um, it would have the same effect. And I think even if you uncheck the box, what you actually had to do was um, go to the left hand icon at the top left, little MFC uh, icon there. There's a custom uh, context menu item added saying exit without installing. So you had to uncheck the box and then close it from there. So it's even more diabolical because everyone uses that left hand context menu all the time, right? Um, so I covered most of this custom installer bypasses standard install method. Uh, legal disclaimer, and my boss claimed this was not needed, but just in case. And you know what? He might actually be right. Like this, and, and this dialogue probably only would, like the vast majority of people probably would have still got hung up by it. Um, but it does present the terms and conditions. So you know what? He, like, he could have been right. Um, but again, I'm not a lawyer. So. And it's tricky not to install, obviously. So how do we deploy this installer? Because um, again, even with this message, you're not going to want to do it. So this is another thing that I've since learned to call drive-by downloads, but back then it just, it just seemed like the way to do it. And I didn't come up with this idea. Um, I think one of my bosses got this idea from some other scam they were pulling. Um, so putting the exploit in banner ads. Um, so basically, websites don't know what ads they run. They sign up with an ad network and they agree to host uh, their ads and they get paid for it. Um, and I think there was, you can configure like, I only want certain categories. I don't, they definitely don't have anything like they get to view every single ad before it shows up on their website. Um, this was five years ago, or almost six years ago now. Um, so I don't know if it's different, but that's how it was back then. And also, as someone who was serving up these ads, we didn't know what, what websites it would show up on. I think uh, the biggest site we got put on was yellowpages.com or whitepages.com and uh, the, the installs went through the roof once it got on there. Um, so basically, um, the ads are hosted on our servers. The ad networks, I guess, don't want to host them their, themselves. Um, if they did, they probably could have detected half this stuff and done something about it, but, and maybe they do that now, but that's how it was done back then. Um, so you would run the ad campaign for a few days, and once, I guess, they were satisfied that was legit, we would then open up our zero by zero iframe which is essentially another page uh, that had the exploit into it. Um, and we could set it up so that you were, it was only configurable to a fraction of viewers, so like 0.05% if you knew you were gonna get a lot of traffic, um, only because it'd be harder to track down, for people to track down where it was coming from. So if you went to another machine, you wouldn't get exposed to it again. Um, but my boss was greedy and this was basically cranked up to 100 all the time. And we, we would check for, like, if you were running a Mozilla browser or some Opera or something like that, we wouldn't expose the iframe to you because it clearly wouldn't work. It was uh, IE6 specific. And we would also keep track of the IP addresses on the server and not show it to the same IP address twice. Um, and we'd set a cookie as well, but, uh, you know, we didn't really rely on that because the user actually has control over their cookies. Or maybe not, depending on which talks you've seen. Um, so how does this whole business make money? Um, so we ended up with over 12 million installs of the software. Um, which I don't, 
I don't know, it could, you might even, with our ability to run whatever executable we wanted, I guess you could maybe even call this a botnet. I don't know. Like, we weren't thinking in those terms at all, but. So, guess how much money our software made with 12 million installs? Does anyone want to shout out some numbers? <laughs> um, not a dime. <laughs> so, it's really depressing that you have this evil, shitty software and <laughs> you've installed it on 12 million of grandma's computers and no money was made on it. Um, so the funny thing is, like affiliate programs for these websites, like Amazon.com and uh, everyone else, they, they know people are going to abuse their affiliate system. So they have all this fraud protection in place. So they're watching out for it. So they'll watch out to it to the degree that they will not pay you, but they will still continue to allow these pieces of software to serve up their ads and allow people to buy uh, whatever they're selling through them. Um, so they could easily just shut off the, the banner ads because they're the ones actually hosting them or like at least put up a message saying like you've been infected with something, something illegitimate is giving you these pop-ups. But they're willing to take your money but they're not willing to pay the scam artists that are actually making it happen. So that's interesting. Again, I don't know if it's different now but that's how it was back then. Um, but my boss still made a lot of money. Um, so this is interesting. So how was this done? Um, so our software would make money by installing other people's software. Um, basically, you could make around 10 cents per install of someone else's software. Um, I think it ranged from as little as 5 cents to as much as 25 cents, depending on the package. And you know, some of this might have been like legitimate software, but the majority of it was other spyware with people convinced that they can make money where we did not using the same techniques. Um, so my boss would package as much spyware as he could get paid for around 20 different packages into one big payload and then try to get paid for all of it. Um, and he probably would have done more, but at that point your computer is essentially unusable. <laughs> um, and they would only, the companies would always argue about the number of actual installs they had, but um, so they would generally only pay around 60% of installs, but when you're simply by opening up an iframe, you're getting 20 million installs, and this was over a couple months, um, times about 10 cents per 20 different packages. Like, that's, that's very easy money and a lot of it. Um, so what happens when you install 20 pieces of spyware at once? Um, so some programmers were a bit lazier than ours, and they actually would install, they would have like a, like a 900K executable and attempt to download the .NET framework, which is like 200 megs. And you, and the, you can't, they didn't even do it silently. So you can see like, if you let it download it, it would actually, like you'd see the progress bar and the .NET <laughs> framework getting installed. Like, and I'm, sh I, I, I'm actually convinced that the .NET framework allows you to do silent installs. It's, they were just lazy. Um, your computer will never be slower. We had a series of uh, test machines and with images we would just refresh all the time to test this out and it was, it was brutal. Like you'd open up Internet Explorer and it would just be nothing but search toolbars. <laughs> um, and even some of the pop-ups that would happen would have them too. Um, and they would try to un uninstall each other. Because <laughs> They know if your machine's vulnerable and you've got their software installed on it, like there's a good chance that they had other people's stuff installed on it too, but they only want their pop-up showing, not other people's, so they would try to uninstall each other. Um, and this included installing antivirus. So if, if your software using basic polymorphic techniques like we were, like, and I wasn't an expert on this stuff, like, um, and they knew that antivirus wasn't picking up their software. They would install antivirus um, with the hopes that it would uh, remove everyone else's. Um, and I don't know, but maybe they were getting paid to install the antivirus, which would be really interesting, actually. <laughs> um, so, do you want to be a millionaire? Because you can. Um, 
So all the technical stuff I've covered is easy. Like any developer should be capable of this. All you need is access to Google and you can figure this stuff all out yourself. Like it's not rocket.